So this week I thought I'd show some simple, easy ways you can make my or really any modular build cheaper, faster, or both. Welcome to the archive. My name's Matt. So the absolute easiest way to save money? Just use different materials. There are tons of alternatives to most materials and techniques that myself and other crafters use regularly. And they make fantastic alternatives if you're looking to either save money or don't have access to the better materials where you live. Can't get XPS? Use the dollar store easy peel white foam core and just glue three together. Okay, so I know that this isn't that kind of foam core, but it is XPS cut to the same thickness. The walls and columns may be very slightly thicker, but as long as they're all the same in your set, that's fine. This is easy enough to do if you cut it to size and then glue it, but you can even do it if you want to glue a sheet and then cut it out, if you use certain glues. Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft actually does a fantastic video on comparing glues for exactly this purpose. I'll link it in the description for anybody interested. You can even do this for the thick mountain blocks, just stack squares together with spray glue, then glue a square to each side to mostly hide the lines. You could even use hot glue, it'd just be a little bit harder to cut. From there you can cut it to the shape that you want. A knife can cut through spray glue just fine. And most of the gaps fade a lot with a bit of sanding when dry. Even the awkward ones from cutting diagonally can be filled with modelling compound or wall filler. I think Americans call it spackle. I could be horrendously wrong though. The diagonal areas don't rub against other pieces, so it's fine to use here. Jeremy again did another fantastic video on using egg cartons for stonework. And there are other foam alternatives out there like EVA foam, which Trent over at Miscast uses sometimes. Or you can use stonework cut from thick card slash chipboard and texture it by rock bashing. You can then put these textures on card walls by triple layering thick card like chipboard, leaving a gap on each side to connect them using card tabs and cutting a space in the bottom for another card tab slot, just like my original walls. Columns just need to have card tabs glued to them, but they still attach just fine. These examples are just triple layer chipboard wrapped in some serial card, textured as wood by scratching it a little bit with a blunt knife. Floors obviously can do basically in the same way, just use chipboard on top instead. And this card is the same stuff that you get at the back of a notepad. Doesn't really get any cheaper than waste materials. Can't get balsa? Coffee stirrers have been used in the community for decades. Are they as pretty and easy to work with? No. Are they cheaper? Oh, definitely. This also applies to connections. Nearly all my builds can be modified to use no magnets. Walls, for example, work just as well with chipboard tabs that fit into the slots cut into the foam. If you have any questions about these techniques, just let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer questions where I can. Now, this tip is fairly specific, so feel free to jump over to the next one, but it might change your mind. Magnets can sometimes be contentious because of the cost, but there are ways to reduce this. If you don't mind your magnetized sections being exposed, you can use various magnetic materials instead for some connections. Strips from a steel tin can are free if you eat soup occasionally or act as a feral raccoon to your friends and family asking for their leftover rubbish. And you can get a hefty coil of iron wire in my equipment list a lot cheaper than paper clips, but you can use those too. 8mm iron or steel nails probably work the best though. Links to these are also in my equipment list. You can use these on columns and wall tiles instead of the south facing magnet, nearly halving the magnet cost. You can technically use it on the floors too, but that'll mess up some of the other connections for accessories like the railings from the balconies that I've shown before. So it's kind of up to you if that's worth it. What you can do is use them for all of the floor connections like on the sides of walls. I've also mentioned before that you can save a lot by buying more at once from a proper magnet shop. It can be twice as cheap or even more. Saying this doesn't help the channel at all. I have zero affiliate links, zero sponsorships, no nothing with any magnet sites or shops at all at the moment. Sending you guys to Amazon would actually be better for the channel financially. But I would far rather that you guys get a good price on your hobby supplies. So if you appreciate that, maybe support me on Patreon. Using other materials does reduce some flexibility. They aren't as strong, so both they and the magnets need to be flush with the edge of the piece. They can't be hidden under milliput like I've shown how to do more recently. The more flush with the surface, the better the magnets will work. But yeah, half price magnetic connections. That's just a pure win. In a lot of places, you can speed up dramatically just by using the right tools and materials. Anyone with a Proxon style hot wire table can tell you they massively speed up what you can do, and even a cheaper one can have this effect to some extent. 
Anyone who's used both balsa wood and popsicle sticks or coffee stirrers can tell you the massive difference in how easy these are to cut and shape and how fast you can make what you want. A lot of the time, speeding things up does mean making it less cheap, but not always. You can be massively more efficient, especially when making modular pieces, by making things in batches. Doing all of the same stage at the same time drastically cuts down on wasted time switching tools and getting refocused. This is harder to do with one-off pieces of terrain unless it's made out of lots of batch cut parts, but really shows its value when making modular stuff. One other really simple thing that you can do to speed things up is to buy some parts pre-made. Scenic sealant, for example, for sealing the outdoor terrain can be bought ready mixed from Geek Gaming. Tree armatures can be bought ready shaped as twisted wire, which can save a ton of time, or even as full pre-made trees. And you can strip these down to the wire if this is all you could find and add your own foliage later. Bushes as well can be bought pre-made to glue onto your tiles or terrain where you want them. The plaster boulders or rocks that I use regularly can all be bought pre-made too. Even roof tiles for buildings can be bought in pre-cut card strips. Links to all of this kind of stuff will be in the description if you value time over cost. And again, none of these links are affiliate links or sponsorships. I'm purely trying to help out those who don't have much time and would rather use money to cut corners. For modular stuff especially, you can save a lot of time and money by making some larger versions of tiles that you already use. The most obvious example is floor tiles, making some six inch by six inch pieces or even larger to fill space faster. This is both cheaper and faster. It saves on both time and materials, spent crafting the connections and textures for the middle of the larger tile. Less magnets, less card tabs, less texturing, and less paint. Pretty much less everything. Same use though, pretty much 90% of the time. Another speed hack for making modular tiles is whacking together something like this from scrap foam or wood. Just quickly, I'd like to thank my generous patrons, without whom these videos could not be made. Thank you so much, guys, and if you want to support the channel, there's a link in the description. Anyway, this little tool perfectly fits a floor tile and has nails in the right places, embedded and hot glued to mark out the magnet placements. You can stab these in rapidly en masse and save a ton of time measuring. I made another one for the magnets at the top and bottom of wall tiles too. Credit for these has to go to one of my patrons. I had a kind of rough idea formulating for something similar, but he got there first and posted it in the Patreon Facebook closed group, which is actually an awesome little place for picking up tips, advice, and showing off your finished projects to each other and me. A tool hack that should be common sense, but I've recently fallen prey to is replace your tools. Blades, wire brushes, regular brushes, all of these get damaged over time, and while some are recoverable with a good deep clean, others just need replacing. Blades are an easy one to remember, because at some point the damn thing just won't cut well, but remembering it faster can lead to less messed up cuts, less trashed materials, and less time wasted making mistakes. A similar waste of time comes from reusing a wire brush for too long. This gnarled old beast I kept rolling for far too long. Not only did the wires start to fall out, which is dangerous because they're quite sharp, but it took forever to get a texture on anything but the softest balsa. But wire brushes are dirt cheap, and I even found a pack that's all of the small useful ones with none of the big pointless ones that aren't much good for hobby. So if wire brushing is bothering you, just pick up a new one. Finally, accept less detail if you are time starved. I will make every argument in favor of doing things slowly to get a better result, because what you build, you've got forever, and you've got your whole life to build a collection. But for the truly time starved, whether that's because of your job, spending time with your kids, or something else, chances are it's more important than making your terrain pristine and perfect. So if that describes you, it might be worth finding a level of quality that's a nice compromise time-wise, but still allows you to enjoy the connections, climbing, or whatever it is that you like about these pieces in an actual game. Right guys, one final quick tip that I forgot to do while I was recording all of that. If you like using balsa, but you wanna save some money on it, buy the balsa wood as a wider strip, and then cut it down to the width that you need yourself. It's a lot more expensive to buy the balsa wood in thinner strips that have been pre-cut for you. But yeah, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. And until next time, I'll be in the archive.